Hey guys, Amos here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make snares inside of Serum. If you enjoy the video, then hit the like and subscribe button to avoid missing future videos. So here's my basic drum beat that I've got. Let's take a listen. So this is the snare in question um, that I wanna back up. Um, there's two things that are currently wrong so far. Uh, one of them is the overall level of this snare. It's way too loud. And also the EQ. If you can look down here on the EQ down here on the analyzer, there's a lot of low end coming in. So let's just find the fundamental. So none of this kind of um, frequency range down here is needed. It's just gonna cause mud in your final mix. So let's start by just getting this to um, the correct frequency. I might come back to that and just kind of roll off some of this depending on um, how my layer turns out. Um, so a way that I like to level, um, I like to reference, uh, first of all on the drum group here, I've just got a little drum bus, which is just kind of um, grouping it together, giving it a little bit of drive. This is without, and then with. And then I've got a FabFilter Pro L2. And this is basically doing nothing apart from I'm just using it as a, uh, um, a leveling tool. So you can see my peaks here, this is my kick, snare, kick, snare. So I'm gonna just bring this snare down and let's just play along. So this is kind of a rough way of doing it. This is never gonna be perfect. You have to ultimately uh, use your ears at the end of the day. So I'm also gonna just listen to this quite quietly. This is um, a piece of advice that I've given a lot of trap feedbacks um, to just listen to your mixes quietly so you can just hear what's kind of poking through in the mix and what's disappearing um, and why you actually want to turn it up in the first place to kind of get that natural compression from your ear. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna turn this down and have a little listen. So yeah, it's around that area. It's not too far off, but again, it, it takes a lot more than that to, to get it in. But um, once we've got the layer, I'll be able to kind of um, accurately show what I'm doing with the levels there as well. So let's open up um, Serum. Let's actually just get my snare group, my new snare, and I'm just gonna run um, where I'm gonna have the snares hitting. And let's mute everything else. So this is what we've got going on first. Right, so with um, the oscillator, I'm gonna set this to a sine wave. Let me just get this right on my keyboard just in case I wanna do some quick button bashing. So first of all, I'm gonna set this uh, random phase all the way to zero. This means it's always gonna have the same starting point. Um, just in case you're doing a couple of snare rolls, it might, um, it might place in a different area and it won't keep your transient true each time. Um, I'm gonna start with LFO1 and I'm gonna attach this to the level. I'm gonna bring the level all the way down um, and bring this parameter up to about nine o'clock or so. And then I'm gonna set this LFO to envelope mode and take it off BPM. And uh, that's kind of the tone that we're gonna get from it. So we're gonna try and create this kind of pluck. So this LFO is um, acting as the attack for the snare, the main kind of peak. So I'm just gonna set some nodes here. And um, I'm just gonna slow the rate down a bit. So it takes a little play. I'm gonna just kind of be going through this quite quick 
um, but in a way that you can understand what I'm doing. But um, what I mean by quick is it takes a lot of time to kind of refine all of these LFOs as we go on to get the sound that you're after. Um, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to go through and get a sound that's kind of quick and sounds like a snare that I can um, layer up with my current snare. So that is the attack. Then, um, then we're going to go for the, uh, the body of the snare, which is basically using noise. Let's actually turn noise on and go through the analog sounds and put ARP white. And we're going to set to envelope and switch BPM off as well. And we're going to go for um, kind of like a pre-delay. So I'm not going to have it hitting like that. That's going to sound a bit too, um, a bit too much like a drum machine. What we want is something a bit more natural so if you imagine um if you imagine a snare lfo is the main initial hit um and then what we're doing here with the noise is kind of the ring of the snare and the um the snare plate across the bottom let's slow this down again a bit Okay, for LFO3, I'm going to use this as a pitch envelope. So I'm going to put this up to the uh, coarse pitch and go into the matrix because this is going um, both left and right. So if we go into the matrix onto the type, uh, you'll see the arrow and we want it to be going forward. And this is just uh, one direction. So we can either have it going uh, up or down. And we want to pitch it from above. So uh, we're going to be pitching down so again envelope mode and um, take BPM off let's put this all the way up for an example and let's bring this down quite heavily so we've got this kind of um, plucking sound now from the pitch envelope let's just speed up See what that's doing there and that's giving us a nice nice punch on the front um, there's also this click which we're getting from the um, from doing this pitch envelope trick so if we go into the matrix and let's just turn this down a little bit you hear what I do if I turn it down quite a lot it's basically off and then full is very clicky you just want to bring that down a little bit more. Sounding a bit more like a snare. Okay, so LFO4, um, we're going to attach this to the pitch of the noise. And again, we need to just go into the matrix and switch this to one direction. So let's have this going from maybe about three o'clock. And we're going to set this to just a gentle slope again. Again, it takes a while to refine each of these to kind of get what you want, but um, just throwing these in so you have an understanding of, of where, where the, sound, the sound and the tonality comes from. Okay, so for the last LFO, I'm going to stick this onto an EQ. I'm going to set this to a band and let's just raise it up so we can see what we're doing and just open up the cue on the filter. And let's put this on the frequency. And again, we're just going to be making a sharp curve. Um, envelope again, so we're not triggering it each time and uh, BPM off. And let's just speed this up. And then we can just mess around. Let's just pull this the other way. 
So this is just kind of um, EQ control and just again, boosting that tonality of the snare. And then we can mess around with kind of more extreme gains. It's kind of nice and fluffy, but again, quite aggressive on the uh, gain. So let's bring that, bring that down. Uh, I forgot to take the BPM off of LFO4, so let's just take that off. And um, Cool, so that's kind of like the fundamentals of what we're doing within Serum. Um, again, like I mentioned, it takes a long time to kind of go through, fine tune, um, and we can always go back to this once we've led with the snare if something doesn't sound right. Um, if the, if for example, the body of the snare is too long, we can bring that back. Um, if the pitch envelope is too aggressive, we can bring that down. Um, we can bring the overall volume of that pinch envelope down, like I showed you as well, to kind of get rid of, if it's too, um, too much attack on it, if it's too clicky at the start, if you're getting too much of, um, a digital sound, that's kind of not what we're after. We've got this, um, got this nice drum beat and we just don't want to turn it into like a drum machine or anything. We want it to sound natural and just boosting um, frequencies that we might be missing on that other snare. So once we've got this in place, let's just get these. I think that's what I was playing. Yeah, that's what I was playing. Okay, so once I've got this in place, we can start processing it a little bit more. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of transient shaping and this isn't too integral. You could do this within Serum, but um, since we've got the sound, I kind of just like to poke out that attack a little bit more. Um, this is a transient shaper that I use. It's the uh, Shack Audio. I can't actually remember how much I picked this up for. I don't think it was much. I just want to punch that out a little bit. Um, I also use Alloy 2. Um, which has a very similar um, simple function on there where it's just got the attack and sustain as well on, on the transient. So I can be really aggressive with it. Not quite subtle. But again, it's not adding too much. So if you don't have these plugins, um, we can just go back in and we can um, we can bring this up a little bit and we can also LFO3, we can just make this a little bit longer so you can kind of feel that attack a little bit more. So there are ways around it. Um, but I kind of like the sound that we've got and I just want to just bring out those tips a little bit more. Okay, next we can do some saturation. Um, I use satin and just add a bit of drive, but I'm going to use um, the saturator built in with Ableton for this. I'm going to put it on soft clip and just bring up the drive a little bit. So you can hear a very, very aggressive example. If you're going to do something like that, you might want to bring the body of the snare down a bit because it's kind of bringing up that a lot more than it is the attack. So, I mean, it sounds cool. It's got a lot of punch, um, but the body for me is, uh, is a bit too aggressive. It's just a lot of, a lot of air in there. So somewhere about there is kind of meeting in the middle for me bringing up the punch, bringing up the body, but it's not too aggressive. It's not kind of, it's not making one overpower the other.